In Apple's nearly two hour long WWDC this year, there was a tiny blink and you'll miss it eight minute section carved out for iPad OS 17. And while there was a huge amount of crossover with iOS 17, there's actually some really cool iPad specific updates in here. And I've been using the developer beta for a couple weeks now, and I wanted to go over what I think are the coolest updates for iPad. Oh, and if you wanna check out this update early too, you can now just by going to settings and software update, but remember to back up your iPad before you do that because when you go on these betas you are at risk of losing all of your data so bear that in mind. Okay let's talk about stage manager first because Apple spent literally less than 10 seconds talking about this and this is a really decent update and it's one of the ones that I was definitely more excited about but stage manager is finally way better you can resize your windows now however you want and more importantly you can move them wherever you want on the iPad they don't snap into position or anything like they were before but you can now literally move them a millimeter if you'd like and reposition everything on your iPad how you'd like to some other apps like Instagram don't allow this which is a shame but pretty much every other app I tried you can move it where you want and you can resize it how you want and it's fantastic that's kind of how I always imagine the stage manager should be on the iPad and this extends to external monitor support as well it now makes using your iPad on an external monitor so much better because you can just put those apps where you'd like to. While I love this new flexibility in Stage Manager, I do wish there was a way you could snap windows into certain places like you can on Windows 10 and 11 and you can with Magnet on the Mac, but this is a fantastic update and I'm really happy it's here. All right, next new feature, and I hope this is kind of like an open gate for lots of other hardware support coming to the iPad, but you can now use an external camera for your iPad for video calls and everything else you'd need it for. This is an awesome update, and when you plug in a camera to your iPad, it will immediately default to using that one. The only kind of issues with this, and it could be because it's a beta, is it only works with FaceTime right now, it doesn't work with Zoom or Teams or Skype or anything like that. I assume coming down the line that will, and also you can't select different inputs for audio and for video. So if you wanted to talk through a microphone and use a camera, I don't think you can do that right now. You have to just use whatever your camera is using. This is a really important feature, I think, because video calls on iPads are never brilliant, especially the camera position isn't fantastic unless you've got the iPad 10th gen. And especially for someone like me, I have it connected to my Mac in a desk setup in a portrait orientation. And that means whenever I take voice calls, I always appear portrait and the camera's never really where I want it. So connecting an external camera lets me have that beautiful feed and I can finally get everything in the right place. Okay, let's talk about lock screen next because there's some really cool updates here which I think a lot of you are going to love. The main thing here is the customization. You can now customize your lock screens in a very similar manner to how you can on your iPhone and you can pick from different wallpapers and different clocks and all those sorts of things. And Apple have made some really beautiful wallpapers. Some highlights would be the, the planets one is really good so you can swipe through the different planets and then when you unlock the iPad, you kind of zoom into that planet. There's also the classic Apple Hello, which gives you that nice Hello font. And then when you zoom into it, you get this beautiful kind of zoomed in version of that. But the bigger update here for me, at least, is the widgets. You can now get widgets on your lock screen and they're different depending on whether you're in portrait or landscape orientation. If you're in landscape, you get them all off to the left-hand side in a very kind of similar view to what today view is like. If you have them in portrait, they kind of mimic the iPhone. So they're just underneath the time. But what I really Really like about these is they're not just widgets in terms of showing you a little bit of information they are actually kind of actionable so if you tap them you immediately go to that app which is really really useful apps like Spotify or you know any other music control or calendar or things like that which sometimes is all I open my iPad for getting into that immediately is awesome and it's fun to see some other apps have fun with it reddit has a little cat widget which is just kind of cute and you can click into there and go to reddit too and you can organize these however you like but I really really like these and I I think they're a fantastic addition to the iPad. Before we move on to the next one, I did want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Paperlike and their new charcoal folio case for iPad. This is Paperlike's take on a folio case and they've done a really fantastic job of it. It's a lush fabric exterior, which feels just like a premium sketchbook or notebook. And it's a really good match for the iPad. It's lined with microfiber interior to cushion your iPad during travel while remaining slim and lightweight too. There's two levels of tilt, which is always good for general iPad use. And it supports the sleep to weight feature as well, which is an essential of any good case. Now I've actually tried a huge amount of iPad cases over the years. And this one from Paperlike actually solves one of the biggest problems I've always had with them. It's actually got a place to securely attach your Apple Pencil. 
Finally, they're using an oversized flap on one side which secures your pencil to the iPad in the right wireless charging position so it will charge up at the same time as well. And it even works if you've got the paper-like grips on your pencil too. The whole thing is just really, really ideal. They've made a really nice case here and if you fancy checking it out then I'll leave a link below and of course a huge thanks goes out to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Next up is actually something similar to the lock screen, but these are actionable widgets on the home screen. Now I know this is something Android has had for the longest time and I don't know why it takes Apple so long to come around to these things, but these actionable widgets pretty much do what they say on the tin. You can control the app through this little widget on your home screen and that's really, really useful for apps like reminders or for music control, or again, for things like calendars and stuff like that. There's not a huge amount of support for this at the moment. All the third party apps I've tried don't really support it. That might be again, because this is a beta, but all of Apple's first party apps have really decent support, which is worth digging into. I really hope developers get on board with implementing these though, because I would love some Spotify controls on my home screen and I'd love some kind of to-do list stuff on my home screen as well with Microsoft to do. That would be awesome. But yeah, this is another cool little update. Following on from there, there's kind of two updates which I think are really important to the iPad. And that first one is PDF improvements across the board. PDF files on iPad should never have been this hard to work with on iPad, but now they're way, way better. When you open up a PDF now, you can start filling it in immediately without the use for any other applications. And Apple's using some kind of really smart AI or ML stuff here to do that. And that scans through the PDF and it allows you to intelligently fill it in. So if there's things like names and addresses, it can actually auto fill that in for you rather than having to write it, which is really useful. If you're someone that goes through a huge amount of PDFs and has to write things in and fill things in, or even add your own signature, you can now do all of that natively within the iPad, which is awesome. And all of that PDF goodness comes to Apple Notes too, which has got a pretty big glow up in this update. When you're working with PDFs on Apple Notes now, you can just insert them into your note and you can scroll through them, which is really cool as well. And you can put multiple PDFs into one note as well. So if you've got loads and loads of PDFs and you wanna keep track of them all within like one bigger note, you can just dump them in, which is fantastic. You can mark these up too. So you can just go straight into markup and start editing them and that will stay with that PDF. Also using some on-device intelligence, you can even highlight things in PDF now and copy and paste and all of that sort of useful stuff. That's all there natively in Notes, which is just great. And moving away from PDFs, you can also link notes in Apple Notes now as well, which is awesome. This is something I've been waiting for for so long. I don't know why other note-taking apps don't have this, but basically you can just link to another note within a note. So if you're typing something and you're like, oh, this note relates to one I made earlier, you can just hold your finger down, go over to link note, start typing in the title of that note, and then it will insert that note into that note which is really great. And then you can jump between those notes really quickly. It's almost like building a tiny mini website out of all your notes and you just keep them all together too. I love this. And when you see features like this, it's like, oh, where were they before? And yeah, just once again shows that Apple Notes is really, really great. Okay, the last update I wanted to really talk about wasn't an iPad specific one, but it came through iOS and all those sorts of things. But AirDrop is now way improved and it feels a lot quicker. And I don't know whether that's just animations or something like that, but when I transferred stuff from my iPad to my iPhone, everything just feels quicker. Now your iPhone does need to be on the developer update as well to see this in action. But yeah, everything feels great. And what's most important is they don't need to be that close to each other anymore. I can walk downstairs while it's transferring and it will just switch to the internet to continue transferring those files. I do this a huge amount because I edit so many photos on my iPad, but then use my iPhone to post them sometimes. And sending files over like that is something I do constantly. So for me, having that quicker and having that a lot more robust, it seems, is just way, way better for my workflow. So I was really excited about that one. There are some other little things as well, which I wanted to mention, but they're not massively important to me. First up is multiple timers, which is something which should have been here a long time ago. The health app is now on iPad as well, and I don't really check the health app that much, but actually seeing it on the iPad is a much better viewing experience. You can see all the graphs a lot better, and there's a huge amount of data here to actually scroll through, especially if you do a lot of exercise with your Apple Watch, which is something which I do. Seeing all of that data is actually quite nice, but again, it's not an app that I'd really gravitate towards. There's a new blur sensor to photos thing which I think is really good if you have a shared iPad around the house or something like that or you lend your iPad to other people or whatever it is you can get it to blur sensitive photos immediately and then to unlock it you have to go through quite a few menus and screens to get there. I think that's a really cool new safety feature and it's definitely worth the mention.
mention. And lastly, the one which I really did think would come at this WWDC is there's still no calculator for the iPad. And I don't know why they're not doing this. I assume it will come at some point in some weird kind of self-referential update. But yeah, still no calculator. What's going on with that? So that wraps up all of the new features I've been really enjoying with the iPad OS 17 update. If you've been using it, let me know how your experience has been below, or if there's any features which you think I should check out that I've missed in this video, do let me know as well. I always love to hear from you. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.